Professor Dr. Balakrishna Reddy, the Dean of School of Law, Mahindra University. He's an acclaimed academician and a seasoned professional with affluent academics and administrative experience. Professor is here to emphasize on legal education in the 21st century, the role of a law teacher. We welcome you, sir. We request you to kindly engage with our audience. Afternoon, everyone. I know how much time Pita have. Okay, okay. Otherwise, I know. Last uh, speaker of the session. I am not here to again, you know, discuss too much. But as a teacher, as a student, I want to raise certain issues uh, in the legal education. Particularly, if you look at, you know, the legal education in the 21st century. Of course, we have to start with the you know, 20th century. We can take uh, to 21st century role of law teachers. I call it, say, you know, leaders of the, you know, legal educators. So I need not talk about. By, uh, according to me, the legal education in the 20th and 21st century are influenced by five factors, okay? One is the globalization. Second one is the liberalization. Third one is the, you know, <coughs> privatization. Fourth one is digitization or digitalization, which, which we are speaking. Last one is the covidization. It's a new term again, you know, I coined, uh, you know, uh, this thing. So if you look at these uh, you know, five influencing factors which influence the education in general and also legal education or even legal profession. We can't, you know, look at legal education is sufferent and, you know, legal profession. We have to look at, you know, both in one go. So when I say uh, first one, globalization, we all know that globalization influenced the global society, global governance, global legal order. We as a legal fraternity, no exception to that. Last 40, 50 years, if you look at, you know, the globalization impact, both, of course, it has a both positive and negative. When I say positive, globalization has solved the global problems, which we never thought of that. But uh, more into the negative side, of course, because today, if you look at two-third of the global society today, you know, lives in third world countries. If you say, around, how many countries are there in the world? Any idea? Just for uh, idea's sake, because we are talking about now, we are talking about the legal education in the 21st century. What kind of competition we are going to have? Any idea how many countries are there in the world? 193 are uh, UN members, okay? Uh, maybe around 200 countries, okay? Uh, I can say. See, the, today, two-third of the global society is consist composed of third world countries. Is it really the globalization which helped the majority of the global society? Ag again, you know, that is a you know, question. So when I look at, you know, the legal profession or legal education, I said the influence, there are certain, you know, negative things, particularly globalization, though I said positives, but I will talk about few minutes on the, how it is influencing the profession governance. One is, uh, again, the globalization, and the negative is, today we talk about, you know, a lot of changes, 70. It's a very important. Just now I said around 200, you know, states or countries, sovereign countries. But today, that, you know, sovereignty is changing. Earlier we used to talk about, you know, strict, stringent sovereignty may be laid down by Bodin, Austin, all those things. But today, earlier we used to call as a, you know, command of sovereign given by political superior to inferiors. But today, that notion is no more. As a teacher, as a student, I can say that today, that understanding of law, the reflection of law is changed. I can say that today law is not, you know, command or something else. Today I can see that law is the science of social adjustment. Law is everywhere. Law is, you know, we have to use this law for a positive purpose. That's mm -hmm. one, you know, important thing I said. Today a lot of developments which influencing the legal education are in legal profession, not only the sovereignty, not, like today we talk about the regulation. You know, earlier we used to regulate a lot, even legal profession, but today a lot of dilution is there regulator to facilitators. Today the change which we are witnessing in the legal governance is, earlier we used to regulate. You may say that today Bar Council, we are there, but dilution is happening, regulator to facilitate. Today, lot of law is, you know, we are taking from lawmaker to law taker. If you look at the states, countries, what we are doing, right or wrong, I'm not here, just I'm, you know, giving you information. The role of states, countries have changed from the lawmaker to law taker. What do you mean by that? Today, a lot of law today, our law is influenced by, you know, international treaties. Whether we like it or not, different thing. Like morning I was mentioning about 
WTO, part of the you know globalization, global pressure. So this is a kind of you know uh, structural changes which are happening in the governance and uh, uh, legal governance. Legal profession is no exception. Regulator to facilitator. Uh, then I, I just now said lawmaker to law taker. Is it a good? Every country is a sovereign country. India is a sovereign country. Why we have to talk about uh, you know taking law from maybe international treaties, other thing? Is it the right? I am not there here to talk about, but I am saying it's a fact. Today we are living in a uh, interdependent world. We all know that we moved from independent sovereign countries to interdependent world. We are in, today living in an interdependent world. How mighty countries are, how powerful countries, how big countries, it won't matter. We have to depend on. That dependency syndrome is creating both positive and negative thing in the legal profession and of course part of that I was mentioning morning, I said uh, the WTO, one institution, of course, we as a leaders of the you know uh, legal education has to update ourselves. So one institution which is going to influence the legal profession, legal education in the years to come, that's why I said 21st century, is the WTO gas. Okay, but here we have a limited choice. You may ask questions, sir, is, you know, sovereign countries, is it that compulsory to you know be part of that if you know something is negative something is you know negatively impacting yes definitely you as a sovereign country can take note but just now i said friends actually today the globe is you know different so interdependency that is where we have a problem so that is the reason why today a lot of things we are you know wto is a part of that uh, earlier I used to say, you know, jokingly, ignorance of law is no excuse, ignorance of constitution is no excuse because it is your basic document. But, it, but today I am telling you, ignorance of WTO, ignorance of GATS is no excuse. If, you, if we ignore, we are the losers. There is no other. Co I said uh, in the morning also, taking into any treaty, consenting into any treaty, you know, signing to any treaty, ratifying to any treaty is a sovereign prerogative. But once we said yes, we consent, we have to accept, okay? So I do this kind of things, for example, some of the countries which were not part of the earlier, you know, this kind of things, like communist countries, for, you know, whether former Soviet Union, China, or other countries, they were not part of the, some of the global institutions, they used to call these as a bourgeoisie, whatever. But today, the same countries, I'm talking about reality. Today, same countries are part of these institutions, and I'll tell you, you as a you know teachers parting to any treaty is you know compromising sovereignty undermining sovereignty limiting sovereignty but still countries have to do china best example china struggled to become party to the earlier gaps and wto and finally china joined in 2001 november and you know that how china is playing important role in the general you know services or legal services so these are you know certain things these are all i think you know we as a Law teachers should understand, and these are all you know part of our thing. Okay, uh, then of course globalization. I can go on, but the, the legal profession, legal education has lot to do with this globalization. I think we all have to keep an eye, and you know what five years, next ten years. Okay, you know reciprocity. Lot of things are there, you know. But India is already committed. I think only as a student. As a teacher, I can say that I think we have to prepare. Preparedness is the necessity. We can't avoid altogether. Of course, we can say the problem with this WTO, GATS, legal services is that there is no pick and choose. Either you accept or reject the entirety. There are 160 plus services. And India is, you know, you know that India is an emerging nation. India is going to be the leader in the 21st century. We can't go back, say. So, provided the limitations, I think, you know, we all have to have. Uh, education, we all have to know and then preparedness is one important thing. We, we'll, I think, law teachers have to keep this kind of uh, developments. Of course, uh, other things like I said, part of the globalization, we have a liberalization. You know, countries have to open up and the legal profession, legal education is influencing, you know, these things. Pre-1991, what was the, you know, situation? We all know that in India I'm talking about. Last 30 years, three decades, the kind of, you know, liberalization, the kind of privatization which is influencing, including the private universities. Today we are here. It's part of the, you know, GATS, globalization of education. These are all, you know, that's why 
globalization, liberalization, privatization, these are all, you know, happening things and these are all part and parcel. We had to keep update. We had to keep our ourselves as a teachers. That is one. The fourth one I said, the digitization. Of course, since morning we are talking about, you call it the digitalization or digitization, which has an influence in all sector. Legal profession, legal education is no exception. The kind of discussion since morning we are having, I know just previous session also we are talking about, you know, the uh, impact or, you know, use of technology in the classrooms and all things. Yes, definitely. So technology is not new to humanity. Technology was there in ancient time. Technology was there in mid-world time. Technology is there today. Technology is going to be there in the 21st century, what we call today fourth industrial revolution, first industrial revolution, what kind of influence the technology used, second, third, today we are in fourth, fifth. These are all, you know, technological. But today I'm asking you all, we are as a teachers, take a use of technology, inevitable, we don't have any option or even, you know, use. But I'm going a step further saying that the technology which is raising lot of challenges to legal fraternity, of course, what we call Law and technology have very close connect. You all agree with me. Law follows technology. Technological development necessitated the legal regulations. And it is true with any, any emerging law. Of course, I'm a student of aerospace defense law. I can tell you the moment, you know, how technology law is connect. The moment when Wright brothers invented aircraft in 1903, within a month, legal regulation started. Same thing with, you know, space technology. I'm giving an example. On 4th October 19, you know, 57, Sputnik 1 was, you know, successfully launched by former Soviet Union. S that is called what we call as a fourth dimension of human activity. Man started activities and the land ventured into sea, aviation, space. Why I'm talking about is, you may ask, what is the, you know, we have to do, you know, here, law teachers are here. Yes, friends, that's what I'm coming to the point. The six to seven decades, the kind of technological developments which happened in the space technology, uh, even if one minute satellite won't function, we are all clueless. That is the, th today that's why the developments which are happening in the technology, I'm giving example. So uh, we talk about space technology, if you look at space stations, space tourism, colonization, habitation, and all these. But these are all posing legal challenges. I said 4th October 1957. I'll tell you within two months, 14th November 1957, the United Nations General Assembly came out with a resolution asking, urging humanity that you use this, uh, you know, technology for betterment of humanity. So that is what technology law has to go. But today, these technologies, I call it, say, you know, you all familiar with that, uh, new and emerging technologies are what we call net technologies. Yes, I call it say, A2J technologies. You name any alphabet, today we have a technology. What is that? Artificial intelligence, big Bitcoin, you know, uh, uh, then, you know, uh, drone tech, all, any, you know, this. But all these have certain common issues for we as a law teachers. What kind of common challenges this technology pose into us? Legal challenges. Okay, use of classroom technology, no doubt. But we have to think a step further. What I look is that these technologies are posing challenges to the existing legal regime. These technologies are, you know, challenging the, you know, regulations, you know, existing laws. So that is what the challenge we all law teachers have to think. Law teachers have to, uh, you know, today the kind of the existing principles, you call it state sovereignty, state jurisdiction, state responsibility, all are they really workable? Today the kind of crimes which are happening in, in a cyber, any technology you take, today boundaries are becoming a meaningless, sitting here do something which is impacting in, uh, other jurisdictions. And you know, do you have a mechanism to deal with that? So that is, a, of course, at, you know, international level, domestic level, how is the effective, you know, ju jurisdiction as per, you know, these things. But today, these are the challenges which technology is posing, and we as a law teachers, I think we, we have to think, you know, that. So that is the digitization, of course, the digital technology we talk about, but my, I'm raising certain basic questions. These are all researchable things, okay? We all think over. Then coming to the fifth point, what I said, COVIDization. Again, it's a new term. Uh, taking clue from the globalization, COVIDization is nothing but COVID pandemic, and COVIDization is not a history, it is a reality. Last three years, we are all witnessing the kind of influence this COVID pandemic uh, 
influenced on us, whether it's the countries or individuals or industry. I don't think anybody, any country, any industry is escaped from this COVID pandemic or COVID digestion. The kind of technology we, which we are using. So definitely it has an influence and you know, video e-filing to video conference, so all last three years, of course, we all learned a lot because of you know compulsion. So COVID pandemic. Today, why I'm talking about you know context of the legal governance is that what we used to talk about globalization, which influenced you know, history. But the future, I'm going to tell you, friends, today, after this you know, COVID pandemic, the existing legal mechanisms have failed. Existing institutions, international institutions, which you call it United Nations or other things are failed. Today, you know, now discussion is happening that are we the existing legal order is going to continue with the existing you know, institutions, existing law. Because they failed, you know how it happened. So these kind of things which are, you know, discussions are happening, part of the COVID, COVID pandemic. And of course, we as a uh, last teachers, what I did was just, you know, I offered a course because innovation is important. Innovation we have to include in the legal field. I'll, I'll come to, I'll share my own experience. So I offered a course to NASA students, you know, COVIDization, its impact on, you know, uh, international law. When I say its impact, you can look at, you know, all human rights to environment, to trade, to humanitarian, to anything. So that is the kind of thinking we should have. And these are going to have a lot of, uh, you know, uh, these are our thought form. I don't have answer to certain things, but I am raising because I thought it's the right form. Because we are sitting here, you know, thinking next five years, next 10 years. This is what, you know, COVID or COVIDization. We as a, again, you know, legal educators, what is our role? Of course, uh, earlier also we spoke about today, maybe another 10 years, 20 years, things are going to be different. And uh, today we believe in and we are practicing also multidisciplinary approach and interdisciplinary or intradisciplinary depend on the you know, uh, institutions which we have. So multidisciplinary approach is uh, very important. And uh, uh, I not only believer, but I am you know practitioner of you know multidisciplinary. I can tell you, I have designed some courses today. Anything you design, you have to keep globe in context. It is not that I am, you know, competitor to, you know, RB University or, you know, this is, no. Those days are gone. Today, competition is global. So global competition, you know, that context actually, of course, I did some innovation. I did some innovation in Nalsar. Of course, again, I am a true believer and practitioner of, you know, law technologies. I've designed some courses combining law with the technology, law with the management. I can tell you, today I have a courses in air, space, defense, maritime, you know, GIS, remote sensing. These are the courses nowhere in this part of the world. I can tell you in guts, you Google it and I can say that. That is the kind of innovation we are. I'm not saying that I, we are all have to do that. If I can do, you all can do you because I am talking about the legal fraternity. I am talking about my brother, sisters, and you know uh, brothers. So that is the reason why we had to think some innovation. And I'll tell you, friends, how to generate money. Also, these courses, I generated ten crores. It, these are all online, on-site courses. These are all distance education. My only approach is that I always say that legal education at the doorsteps of the needy with affordable cost. Please make my statement. I am telling you. Legal education at the doorsteps of the needy with affordable cost. Of course, you know, institutions like Nalsar can charge so much, but I'm not doing that because I want to take this education. And today, happily I can share, not proudly, happily I can share that more than 4,000 officers, you call it, say, you know, Army, Air Force, Navy, scientists from ISRO, all have taken this course, they are getting benefits. So I'm giving an idea that why not others, these are all unexplored and lot of potential areas and uh, aviation for example though population we always say that have a few minutes no? okay population normally we say you know liability but i can tell you asset today india is being a youngest nation of the world 35 percent of our you know 65 percent of our population is below 35 years age so we can mold this you know young population into the right thing and of course legal education has to fill this gap so i was just mentioning if you know we can do wonders in technology management you know uh, and also you know uh, engineering medicine why not we do in the same thing in law maybe we have to give a thought on that okay Th that is what you know of course bar council is there we have to follow rules but unfortunately the bar council which we have compared to other you know counterparts for example american bar association every two years they hold meetings and they set syllabus you know what is uh, relevant to the 
present context like that. But unfortunately, uh, that is the bar council which we have. I am not commenting on that. But within the limit, you know, uh, we can do things. Okay, that is okay. Not to blame, not to, uh, I am not going, but whatever the limitation, whatever the freedom we have, of course, like choice-based credit system, seminar courses, you know, elective courses, all these we can do. And research, you are talking about research. Yes, definitely, even within the prescribed thing, we can do a lot of research. For example, I, I do in Nalsar or even now Mahindra, we do, you know, project is compulsory for student. Okay, they, they can do research. Uh, you know, what I did, you know, we, we have to, okay, 25 marks, you give it projects. So once marks are there, mandatory is there, students will do that. So that kind of, maybe you don't change, you know, all, but at least some sort of thinking we can, you know, do that. So this is what, you know, and finally I just want to touch, all these things I have done, part of the, you know, we all know CSR, yes, what is that, CSR? Uh, I, CSR versus, you know, a uh, lot of writings I am doing in the recent past, CSR versus ASR. What is ASR? Academic social responsibility. What do you mean by academic social responsibility? Because if institutions, if we have academicians have a time, freedom, we, we all teachers, we have a talent to students. If we don't do, if we don't start, whom we can blame? That's why, you know, part of the academic... Uh, social responsibility. Earlier, Madam was talking about giving back to the society. Yes, definitely we as a institutions, if you say that RV is a, you know, best, what is the contribution of our in institutions towards society? So again, here I tell you without taking, I know uh, lunch is there, but you know, since I am still following, you know, my time. So academic social responsibility, I did it in Alsar. Uh, I am adding, CSR is a corporate social responsibility. Earlier it was, uh, you know, philanthropy, charity, but today, 135 of the, you know, Companies Act 2000, you know, uh, 13 mandates that it is a mandate. Today, I am appealing to all my, you know, colleagues is that, today that was the earlier charity, they made it law. Tomorrow, if we don't, institutions, if we don't do, tomorrow law will come and say that, uh, Professor Murdigaru, you have to do that. So I don't want to, to give chance to them. It, instead of that, I think we all should, you know, start thinking how be best we can help, how be best we can think, you know. This is academic social risk. I'll send my articles. I have done, you know, a lot of research on CSR versus ASRR. How, what kind of initiation had been done in the NALSRR, you know, now mind. That kind of thinking, I think, we all, we all can do, we all can think. So, many things I can do, but, you know, uh, time is that. I want to take up some questions. Here I am raised certain issues because I thought this is a right forum to raise these issues. Maybe I don't, uh, I don't know whether I have answered to all what I said are, but I thought these are all issues to be researched, issues to be think as a lot of te uh, teachers. This is, with this, I'll stop here. We can have a few questions. That's what I want. Thank you. Thank you. I don't know questions won't come because everybody is waiting for lunch, but you know, still. Huh? Angry or hungry? Hungry with angry. Yes. Any question? This, these are all, you know, issues I raised. Think over. But if, if anybody wants specific, you know, um, elaboration or anything, I am ready to answer. You see, that is what I am telling, you know. Uh, that is the advantage of last. Uh, wherever you are sharing the data when he is taking up, right? I hereby consent and you are doing. But today, I think there is going to be a paradigm shift. And including our Indian data privacy is going to have explicit concern, legitimate purpose. I think they are building a lot of qualifiers, um, giving a tough task to the corporates or enterprises designing and product or business. So that's where the legal professional like us come into a picture to maintain a dichotomy of balance between how can we enable the business as well as to comply with the legal requirements and regulatory. Uh, I, I think I agree with you. I think we need to come academy, industry, government collaboration. Earlier we used to talk about academy, industry, but now we have to add government. That is where we can, you know, definitely do these things. The government of, of course, definitely we have to. No, no. Uh, I'll tell. Okay. Since you said government won't come, uh, it, you know, happened in Nalsa because since one minute I'll take. Part of my social responsibility, madam, I drafted a lot of laws, 
112 land loss we did because Telangana state formed in 2014. They assigned the task to us, we did. And whether it's not only land loss, revenue loss, you know, municipal, that is one important thing. Morning you are talking about, and uh, I can say that you know, institutions should help the government. Of course, we, we have to go them, you know, we have to get projects because, you know, helping the society. We have to think in the larger thing. I think